Ladies and gentlemen, our next presentation is going to be from the podium and from Good Food Institute. We have with us Nicole Rock, and she's going to give us an overview of plant-based proteins in the pulses sector from India. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we'd like to welcome Nicole Rock onto stage. Can we have the presentation up, please? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Rock. I work as a senior innovation specialist at the Good Food Institute India. Um, for those of you who are not yet familiar with our organization, the Good Food Institute India is part of a network of nonprofit agencies working to diversify our existing protein supply system for a more just, sustainable, and secure food future. Um, so Murad and all the other speakers, I think, set me up quite well. Um, but essentially, what we're looking at over the next sort of decade and beyond is up to almost a 200% increase in the demand for, pro for protein. And much of this demand is going to come from emerging markets like India, with major implications on our local ecosystem, as well as our climate pledges. Um, relying on our existing protein supply system to feed this growing demand presents several challenges across environmental sustainability, food security, as well as public health implications. Um, animal agriculture, as we're all already familiar with, is one of the leading causes for environmental um, degradation as well as ecosystem loss worldwide. Um, and developing countries like India are likely to suffer 99% of the casualties um, attributable to climate change. Industrial animal agriculture also diverts massive quantities of crops away from human consumption and towards animal feed, which ultimately drives up the, cro di drives up the cost of legumes and grains, displacing subsistence farmers and exacerbating food security in low- and middle-income countries as well. And finally, our global um, food system poses significant risks for human health, um, risks that transcend national borders, but particularly impact um, communities living um, in low and middle income countries. Um, with India, we also have an urgent issue related to nutritional security. Um, India suffers from endemic nutritional de deficiencies, both in terms of anemia as well as in terms of stunting and wasting, calling for a major requirement and need for protein diversification. Um, and here's where we believe smart proteins come in. Um, smart proteins are food products that we describe as having the same functionality, taste, um, cultural formats and implications of animal-derived meat, eggs, and dairy. Um, primarily, these products are created using crop ingredients, fermentation technology, or animal cell agriculture. Um, and the idea is essentially to give consumers a product that feels like a simple switch rather than a sacrifice. Plant-based foods and what we're talking about today are meat, egg, and dairy, um, meat, egg, and dairy sources of protein. Um, 
that mimic, like I said, the taste, texture, nutritional um, composition of their animal-derived sources um, and are composed of the same proteins, fat, vitamins, minerals um, that their animal-derived counterparts um, have as well. In India, over the last two years, we've seen a massive explosion in the plant-based industry in particular. We currently have 400 products available on the market right now from 60 different brands um, across retail, e-commerce, and food service, and the industry is only growing. Um, apart from that, we've also been working to build out an ecosystem um, to ensure that these products can improve in functionality, improve in taste, improve in their nutritional um, parameters by working with ingredient suppliers, equipment suppliers, research institutes, co-manufacturers across the ecosystem, as well as working with distributors to ensure there's ease of access for the consumer as well. In terms of category awareness, we're seeing, um, we're seeing hype and we're seeing lots of Bollywood celebrities and cricket superstars enter the space um, and really try and move the space forward from an early adopter majority to the true mass market. Uh, GFI India and Deloitte India conducted an economic modeling exercise. Um, and what we found is that um, Smart proteins could potentially be worth between anywhere between 1.5 billion to 4 billion by 2030. What I want to point out is that the numbers on this screen is not inevitable. Um, these growth rates really will require significantly more category awareness about what these products are um, and what the implications for these products are on our food system, as well as investment across the value chain to ensure that we're reaching points of price parity that makes sense for the Indian consumer. In terms of the key challenges that we're facing in the Indian ecosystem right now, one of the major bottlenecks that we have in the plant protein sector is diversification of ingredient sources. Currently, majority of the plant-based sector in India is importing protein isolates, concentrates, TVPs from other countries, and are attracting duties of between 40 to 60 percent, um, which has direct implications on the cost of these products for consumers. Apart from that, um, there exist huge knowledge gaps that currently um, across the value chain, right from protein processing to product formulation. If we're talking about reaching those points of price parity and if we're looking at that $4 billion economic opportunity by 2030, this is a key area that we need investment and focus on both from the government as well as from research institutes. And then finally, um, we, really need to, we really need to integrate back into the agri supply system. Currently, the pulses crops that we're growing um, aren't grown for fit-for-purpose um, uh, fit product implications. And so what you end up seeing is that protein processors in the country um, are choosing not to use Indian raw materials because they're seeing batch-to-batch -batch variability in terms of the pulses that they're actually receiving when they're looking to process them. So that's another key area that governments um, really need to work on. So how we see the smart protein sector in India really moving forward and really growing to achieve those targets is three places. One, increased public and private investment. Second is research and technology commercialization. And then finally, startup and supplier scaling. Um, the good news is that we're moving forward in some of these directions, but there's a lot more that can and needs to be done. Um, what I have on the screen right now is the investment distribution for the overall uh, smart protein sector globally. In 2022, for the first time ever in the history of the alternative protein sector, a majority of the global share of investments um, was actually from outside of North America. Um, slowly and steadily, um, investors as well as companies are seeing the shift of the future of food more eastward. Um, the shifting global economic climate has opened up major opportunities for investors to double down on alternative protein investments in Asia and emerging markets particularly. 
In terms of agri-integration and value creation, um, which is where India and other emerging markets can really contribute to the global ecosystem, a lot of work needs to be done on the, ki on the kind of indigenous crop sources that we have. So whether it's in terms of mapping the genotypic and phenotypic information of various crop sources, whether it's improving and optimizing on breeding capabilities, whether it's in terms of upstream um, processing or food functionality information, the good news is that work is being done, but there needs to be a lot more focus within these areas to particularly stimulate product development using indigenous crop sources. And finally, um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to really scale and advance both infrastructure as well as industry development. Um, private sector collaboration, collaboration between industries, leveraging the innovative capabilities of startups, supporting them to scale, both in terms of manufacturing as well as in terms of dis distribution. Working closely with the regulator to ensure that there's actually a regulatory path to market for these products and extending that to go beyond just the regulatory capabilities, but also ensuring that there's some form of ease of doing business to support specifically this alternative protein or smart protein sector, which has major implications for um, the pulses sector more broadly. And then finally, extending incentives for infrastructure investment, export manufacturing, value chain development for these food products that could potentially have massive implications on what our um, nutritional burden to the world looks like as well in the next 10, 15 years. Um, I leave it at that, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. May I please request to wait on stage for a brief moment? Uh, May I please request uh, Sir to please step up on stage and give a quick memento? No, sir, up. Sir, good. Thank you, sir, for stepping up on stage and presenting this memento to Nicole.